for you. Give the heparin, please. Okay, heparin's in. Okay. Bill? Bill, can I hand you this? Bill, can I hand you this? We have the one person that calls, regular call, and then Pete calls. I'm sorry, I clamped your lines. Oh, uh, no worries. I'm sorry. Okay, knife and a uh, arterial cannula, please. your arterial line. All right, thanks. I'm a First drink for the SBC. Pick up. Pump sucker, please. Okay, sucker's around. Put your pump sucker at. Okay. Knife, the SBC panel, please. Bill, the pressure is a little bit low. Um, um, can you give a hundred in through the arterial? Yeah, canyon? sorry, I was just about to ask you about that. I apologize. Um, yeah, well, okay. we're uh, we're rapid, so stitch for um, the IVC. Here, here's your blood gas, Bill. All right, this is just. Uh, I, I didn't realize that. Let me uh, let me get some phenylephrine and running. Great, thanks. Okay, you got your venous lines. All right, thanks. I'm going to vap that now. Yeah, pressure is still really low, uh, given given a lot of neo. Yeah, and I'm taking the Venus line. I'm almost done. You going on bypass? Um, yeah, on yeah. Bypass. Hold on one second. Okay, going on bypass. Going on bypass. Let's go on to 34 degrees. Okay, on bypass. All right, run your cardiac bleed job. Okay. Uh, Let's go. Come Come on, on, Mr. Mr. Old guy, he's got bad kidneys. We need a short bypass run. We do it All this right, way every time. Flush in the cardio please. All right. All right, that's good. Okay, please is off. Drop your flow. Flat out. Clamps on, back up. Up. What was the ACT? One sec. Uh, running plegia. Oh, is there a clamp on that line? Yeah, I didn't even ask you for the plegia oh, yet. Sorry. Oh, come on, let's get some party plegia going. Yeah, okay, uh, sorry, thank you. That's 92. What'd you say the so ACT what? was? Yeah, oh, uh, hold on. Uh, oh, 280. Uh, well, that's a problem. Uh, yeah. I'm giving some effort. How much of your plegia is in? Uh, that's coming up on 500 there. This Del Nido is good stuff, isn't it? Uh, Del Nido. Yeah, uh, Del Nido cardioplegia. That's what we said we were going to use. This is not Del Nido. Well, why didn't we do the briefing? Oh, uh, I wasn't. We talked I don't think about I was it in the this morning for the briefing. Yeah, we said it. We did. I must have Maybe stepped yeah. out at that point in time, sir. I apologize. Yeah. All right, the heart's full. Is your drainage all right? Uh, let me uh, turn on my vacuum here. Because the cannula position's fine. Um, okay, the heart's all arrested, plegia is off. Um, you know, my drainage is not very good. The vacuum didn't help my drainage. Uh, can you check the, the cannula is fine and the heart's empty. Um, okay. Bill, are you doing something about that pressure? You know, I can't bring my flow up any higher than an index of like 1.4 right Well, now. just turn your suckers on. Give me, give me, turn your suckers all the way up. Suckers are all the way up, sir. As we join this operation, we can see that the team is not in sync right at the start. There's a conversation between the perfusionist and the circulator that's separate from the other members of the team. And actually this is okay, but it means that uh, our perfusionist is not really able to gather information about what's happening. So doesn't hear the fact that heparin is going in, the scrub 
practitioner uh, tries to give him lines and he doesn't hear her and can't see her. So he's physically detached. And he's actually there, present, but mentally he's not up to speed with the, with the progress of the operation. This is not critical at this stage, but it does have some impact later on in, in the case. And we, we can see that when the anesthesiologist suggests that the, the pressure is a little low, um, Bill's language then is, you know, I was just going to ask you about that and I didn't realise that was happening. So in his language now, there are some low signal cues that he's not completely up to speed with the operation. He's, he's falling behind. And this could be the impact of the, of the poor briefing that we saw earlier. The fact that this, he's really still trying to, to uh, tune into what's happening in the operation. Now, this is a critical point for other members of the team, the anesthesiologist, the surgeon, the scrub practitioner. Because by paying attention to the way that Bill, the perfusionist, is saying these things means that it gives them an indication that a critical team member is perhaps not on the same page or, and they can then intervene and say, do you need some time to catch up or how can we help you or how can we regroup? But that does not happen. And actually what does happen is that with the pressure to proceed with the operation that the surgeon is now placing on the perfusionist, um, he makes a, a call to, to go on, on bypass. It's not something that he would really do in, in real life at this stage. And it's the equivalent of trying to jump the plane over the glide slope when he's coming in um, too fast and too low to, to land. And um, what ultimately happens here is that Bill becomes a high-risk individual in the team. <clears throat> when the anesthesiologist asks him for the ACT, He's really overloaded and freezes. In fact, he's so overloaded with different tasks, his working memory is at full capacity and he can't speak. He can only give a hand signal. And at, at, this, at this time, really, this is uh, a high-risk individual that's, that is potentially going to harm the patient by not being up to speed with the rest of the team. To close with, cardioplegia was particularly troublesome in this situation. The perfusionist had the wrong type um, was not ready to give it and then gave it early before the surgeon had asked for it. And so we can um, maybe trace back the reasons for this to the briefing. Now the briefing might have solved some of these problems because if you remember the perfusionist wasn't ready when cardioplegia was, was mentioned. And in fact the anesthesiologist effectively throws the perfusionist under the bus at the end of the case when the surgeon is standing with his open arm saying, what's, you know, what's happening? The anesthesiologist said, we said it. <laughs>